In this study, we're going to be debunking preterism. Now, first and foremost, be before we get into the scriptures, I want to go over this because, um, firstly, uh, preterism was started by the Jesuits as a part of the Counter-Reformation. Uh, a simple Google search will show you very clearly that, yes, the, Je the Jesuit uh, Louis de Alcazar first introduced the idea of preterism during the Counter-Reformation. So, uh, preterism is a, from the Counter-Reformation, and the Counter-Reformation is attempting to counter the Reformation and its fruits, which would be us. Again, uh, uh, you know, your brethren out there, like the Baptists and th things like that, a lot of those denominations, they came out of the Reformation, and that's, that's where it produced true Bible believers. That's why now today that we have denominations like the Baptists and others that hold to the Bible as the sole authority in all matters of faith and practice. That's a fruit of the Reformation. The Jesuits are attempting to counter that Reformation, and if you study out the history and things like that, you'll see quite clearly that the Jesuits are the main group that are spreading influence and attempting to take over the world uh, for the Antichrist. Uh, they are very much being used by the devil as a part of the end times to eventually bring in, after the rapture, the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist and everything. I do believe it's going to be very much tied uh, to Roman Catholicism, a lot of the things that they do, and of course them um, you know, pretending to be at peace with the Jews and then turning on them. Again, that's a very um, strong theory that I have for the end times as far as that whole thing goes. So when you hear these words of like the Illuminati, secret societies, uh, the most important thing to understand is that the Jesuits are the primary influence of all of this. They are they are uh, they attempt to take over governments. It's been documented that they have brought a lot of uh, trouble to other countries and things like that. Um, again, if you want more information on that, make sure and check out books out there like the Secret History of the Jesuits and others, because there's quite a bit of evidence just showing that they are attempting to take over the world. So that this is the main group. This is. Right here, it all goes back to Rome, and the Jesuits are a, an arm of the Roman Catholic Church. So, very important to understand. So, again, preterism was started by these guys. So, why in the world should a Bible believer even give it the time of day? You know, it, it's very important to understand. And on top of that, if for those of you who may not understand what preterism is, it's basically, it even says it right here. Preterists believe that the book was written... Uh, they believe uh, preterism is the interpretation of the book of Revelation as a prophecy of events that happened in the first century. So preterism is essentially very similar to amimillennialism in that they believe everything took place during 70 AD, the ransacking of Jerusalem and things like that. And they believe that there's no prophecy left to be fulfilled. They believe that it all came to pass and the book of Revelation is all symbolic and all this crazy stuff. Again, that, that is what they believe. They don't believe the book of Revelation is ever going to come true. Now, as a Bible believer, you should be, have read your scriptures and you should know that there is an overwhelming amount of prophecies that have yet to come to pass. The book of Revelation speaks literally about the third of the trees burning up and things like that. So again, this is why Bible believers should not even really entertain this. A preterism is a very silly um, the, uh, theological system. Uh, same as amillennialism, they're both very silly, even um, post-millennialism, uh, the whole idea that, uh, you know, we're in the kingdom now and Jesus is going to come back at the end of the thousand years or something crazy like that. Again, they, all this stuff is nonsense, all right? Premillennialism is the true, uh, is quite clearly the true position from the Bible when you read the book of Revelation and prophecy. And again, uh, the, this right here is just a a silly theological system, the best way I can put it. And we're going to show that once we get into the scriptures because their main uh, proof text of this is would be in Matthew 24, 34. And so we'll go ahead and begin there. So let's go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34 because this is where they hang themselves. This is, again, this is basically the foundation. This is what they'll quote at you if you get into an argument with them. It's as simple as that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. 
So again, this is this is it. This is the you know one of the main proof texts that a preterist will run to. And as I was saying, and I'll continue to say throughout this study, it's silly because they, if this is all you really got, and that's really all they have, everything else they try to explain it away by saying, well, it's just symbolic language. You know, when it talks about the sun, the moon being darkened, it's not actually talking about it literally being darkened. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just... It's just a, you know, a sign that it's, you know, it's a terrible day. <laughs> you know, it's again, this is laughable stuff. They are literally trying to write off all the prophecies that have yet to come to pass because they are stuck on this little portion of a verse. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. That's their little foundation. Now, again, every preterist hangs themselves on this small portion of the verse. This generation shall not pass. Now, the scriptures before Matthew 24 tell us exactly what this generation means. Again, this is where you compare scripture with scripture. As you see on the banner above in my videos, study to show thyself self approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You must use scripture with scripture to develop your interpretations from the Bible. If you're not doing that, or you're getting stuck on a small portion of a verse, you don't have a theological system. It's as simple as that. You do not have enough scripture to support your false position of preterism. Again, th this is so important, brethren. This is why being a Berean, searching the scriptures to see if, the, if these things are so, uh, th that's why the Bible commands you to study. You know, and rightly divide because you get people who don't rightly divide and they come up with this nonsense, which is just terrible. And they're they're getting it from a from a Jesuit, <laughs> the same group that is attempting to take over the world, you know, for the for Satan, for the Antichrist. Uh, it's 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 insane. So, again, as I was saying, the scriptures before Matthew 24 are going to tell us exactly what this generation means. We're going to get to the bottom of this. You know, let's go deep into this. This is a deep Bible study. And I'm going to spoil the surprise now because I like to be very straightforward and get right to the point. These references are not literal. They are spiritual. And we're going to prove that from Scripture. Now go to Matthew chapter 23, the preceding chapter. So Matthew 23, and you're going to begin, we're going to begin in verses 27 to 36. 27 to 36. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear before beautiful indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send, wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Hmm, whom ye slew, huh? Uh, how did they slay somebody if they didn't? Even, they weren't even living generations ago? Hmm, if this is, if Jesus is saying this generation shall not pass, and then he's lumping this generation into the previous generations that slew Abel all the way back to Abel, I think we're getting somewhere with this, aren't we? Let's continue here. Unto the blood of Zacharias, uh, son of Barachus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So again, the this generation is being lumped in with the previous literal generations that killed the Old Testament saints. Hmm, that's very interesting. So to clarify, Jesus was not speaking to uh, to both of this, the disciples and the Pharisees when saying this generation, because that's another thing too is, is people will think, well, was he speaking to everybody at large? No, he was speaking to the Pharisees and those that are of Satan. And we'll get to that in just a second. 
The other references to this generation make it clear it is an evil and adulterous generation. Let's go to Matthew 12, 39. Let's go up a little bit here. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. Matthew 12, 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no be sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So again, the, the this um, that clearly shows that this is a wicked generation seeking after a sign. So again, just to clarify, he's not talking to the, uh, the disciples and everybody at lumping them in with this generation. The disciples are clearly of God and they would not be the ones to be blamed for the blood of the prophets. However, the Pharisees, which are called the children of the devil, are, according to the verses that we just read before this. So again, uh, it, we're revealing a few things here. We're, it's quite clear that this is talking about a spiritual generation, but we'll continue and show more and more how this, how this all factors in. So again, um, it is a wicked generation seeking after a sign. Now go to John chapter 8, verses 41 to 44. John chapter 8, verses 41 to 44. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Hmm, kind of like preterism, huh? It all happened in 70 AD. Everything, all the prophecies were f fulfilled in 70 AD. Yeah, you're a liar. You are lying about the Bible, and you're trying to explain away the rest of it because your theological system doesn't hold up, and you're stuck on one portion of a verse that if you simply rightly divide the scriptures that we're, as we're doing in the study, you will see it's a spiritual generation, not literal, as we're showing right here. They are of their father, the devil. Spiritually speaking, that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about something literal. It's talking about spiritual. They are of their father, the devil. So again, this generation is the generation of the children of the devil, which has not, which has uh, no physical aspects to it. It's talking spiritually speaking. These are not literal children, but spiritual, which means there are no multiple generations spiritually speaking. Again, there's no multiple generations um, when you're talking about something spiritual. It doesn't make any sense. The only time you have different generations is in a physical sense. You know, so children are born every. You know, some children are born every 10 to 20 years, and you have a generation, generation, and generation after that. So, spiritually speaking, uh, there doesn't need to be multiple generations. So, again, we're, we're seeing right here that this is a spiritual generation. It's not physical. And to drive this point home further, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 shows even more of this. So, Genesis chapter 3. In verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise thy heel. So again, you see right there, the woman's seed, that would be the, uh, the Satan when he was attacking the Jewish people all the way up until Jesus Christ had come forth. Again, the devil attacks the, the nation of Israel. He attacks the Jews because, again, it's because of the Jews that Jesus came forth and redeemed us, uh, redeemed all mankind on the cross. So, again, he was trying to destroy that. That's why you see in the, uh, in the Old Testament, you see them being told not to go to the daughters of Canaan and things like that to, to basically be with other Jews to preserve that lineage, preserve that perfect seed. And everything and to also not to bring in other gods because idol worship was a part of it too so 
And then you get the one physical spiritual seed, so to speak, which is Jesus Christ who came forth. And eventually we'll see the actual son of Satan. But there's different debates on that. You know, a lot of people will say, well, is it some physical born Satan? Or I believe it's a man that simply gets indwelled by Satan the, the in a spiritual sense. It's not some Satan's. I don't believe Satan's going to bring forth some devil man. I believe it's going to be Satan possessing a man. Um, that is willing, essentially. You have these secret societies out there that are practicing this satanic stuff be behind closed doors. Uh, we're in a spiritual warfare. And if you don't think there's um, very dark things going on behind closed doors, uh, you need to take another look um, at what they clearly, you know, hide in plain sight. But again, that's the, the point is, is that spiritually speaking, again, you have the Jews and they brought forth Jesus. And then, of course, you have Satan, who is uh, at enmity between them. So again, the, this gen the, the whole thing behind this generation is that it is a spiritual generation. It is not physical. And now, also, to, go, to get even more into this, 1 John chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. So go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. Because this clears it up as well. Very, I mean, it makes it very, very clear. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. So you see right there, Cain is being called of that wicked one. Was Cain a literal son of the devil? No. But was he spiritually? Yes. That sheds perfect light on what the scriptures are talking about. So again, you see right there with the proof. So again, this is a spiritual generation that all these things should not be fulfilled. So again, a spiritual generation is clearly one generation. Hence, this generation, that refers to both past, present, and the future. So the application of Matthew chapter 24, verse 34, is clearly extended out to the future when the actual book of Revelation will come to pass. The promises that Jesus Christ made to the church of the rapture will come to pass. The, all the Old Testament um, prophecies that are lumped into the book of Revelation will come to pass. We see it right now at, at the um, recording of this video on 10-6 of 2024. We see quite clearly that, that Israel is getting ready to rebuild their next temple. And that's the same temple that scripture says very clearly the Antichrist is going to sit in. It's all coming to pass right before our very eyes. Now, what's the timing of it? Who knows? They're trying to get it built and things like that. There's factors going in. But we see quite clearly from just simply looking at the world that prophecies are coming to fulfillment. These things will come to pass and God will come back for us and remake this world anew and end death and suffering. If you're a preterist and you believe that death and suffering just continues on until uh, just indefinitely and God's just basically left us here to you know, murder each other and commit wicked sins just for forever. I mean, you don't know what you're talking about. I really feel bad for somebody for somebody out there who could believe in preterism when it teaches that literally there's no end to death. There's no end to the suffering of this world. Jesus has just left us here with a new covenant. And yeah, people get to go to heaven or hell and that's it. And it just goes on forever. It doesn't make any sense. God wants to make this world anew. It's quite clear that he wants to burn this world up and bring a new heaven and new earth for us to have everlasting life in, for us to en enjoy and be with the Lord forever. And if you're against that, you're a preterist, you have a serious spiritual problem. And it's as simple as that. And on top of that, the scriptures have a very big problem with you as well. So with that being said, that is the end of this study. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.